Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Do you remember back several years ago when we had so much snow from Thanksgiving through New Year's Day? And it got pretty cold at times, snow piled up. Well, then along came the middle of January and the temperature climbed to 60 degrees. In a few days, all the snow and ice had gone down the sewers and away. This was caused by warm winds. Well, out around the Naughty Pine Country, a warm wind is looked upon with fear and dread if it comes in the middle of winter. You'll know why when you hear the story, Chinook. Let's take a long trip up to Mid-Mountain Dam in the mountains. It's the highest dam in the Naughty Pine area. Jack Kimball and Cole Nason are standing on the dam watching the thaw water run through the water gate. Neither man is too happy about the off-season thaw. And the amount of thaw water is increasing daily, Jack. I'll say it is. Two days ago, it was just a trickle. Now it's the size of a husky creek. I suppose it'd be like a river in a couple of more days. I don't like it. Neither do I, Cole. This is a real... Hey, did you hear that? Yeah, it's moving ice up in the mountains. That could spell real trouble. And how? As I was going to say, this is a real Chinook. Yes, Jack, it does look like this warm wind blowing down the mountains is a real Chinook. And it's feared around Naughty Pine because of the premature thawing it causes. If it continues, soon floodwaters run over the frozen streams and rivers. If the Chinook continues for a long period, huge pieces of ice break off from the mountains and slide rapidly down the half-frozen rivers, just as if they were waxed floors. Let's drop in on Bill and his rangers as they listen to the weather forecast coming over their radio in headquarters. temperature today will be 59 degrees. The low tonight will be 34. The five-day forecast is unseasonably warm weather as long as the Chinook winds continue to blow down on us. And now back to our march time. Turn it off, pal. Uh, Sure thing, Bill. I remember the last time a Chinook took a good hold in this part of the country. Weren't funny, not at all. This is the time of the year for freezing cold, not spring warm up. I've heard stories about the last time we had a good Chinook around here. Yeah, them ain't stories, sonny. What you heard is fact. The warm winds at this time of the year ain't no good for man or beast. Ah, Chinook Indian wind come from land of Chinook people. Old time Indian believe God's angry when warm wind blow in winter and bring much hardship. Indian believe it bad omen when come in cold of winter. It's not only the Indians who believe that, Gray Wolf. These warm winds are no good for us. Should be 15 below zero, not 50 above. Bill, this is my first experience like this. Just how dangerous is this off-season heat wave? Well, pal, the warm winds burn the trees, for one thing. They don't like a premature thaw. And thaw water can get into the crevices of a tree and split it open when the fast freeze comes along after this hot spell. And all the animals and plant life of the forest are stirred to a premature awakening. The melting ice and snow causes floods because the ground isn't porous enough to receive the water. The biggest danger in the mountains is from moving ice. Great chunks break off and they weigh hundreds of tons. Natural battering rams. They've been known to do great damage. Then the Mid-Mountain Dam and the Knotty Pine Dam could be in great danger? Definitely. An ice slide that was powerful enough could knock out both dams and then proceed to knock out most of Knotty Pine as well. Wow. Well, the only thing we can do is to hope and pray for a sudden cold snap. Right. If it doesn't come soon, other things will begin to snap. (laughs) 
Maybe we'd better open the water gate wider, Jack. There's about three feet of it on top of the ice in the reservoir. I think you're right, Cole. Let's go back to the powerhouse and set the machinery in motion. <clears throat> Jack, we'd better do something about that moving ice. If a big chunk of it came down here, it would be like sliding it on a banana peel. Top of the dam wouldn't even hold it long enough to make it grunt. You're right. We'd better get somebody to go up there and find out what's going on in the ice fields. Who are you going to call, Jack? The one man who knows that country like the back of his hand. Bill Jefferson. Ranger headquarters, Grey Wolf speaking. Grey Wolf, this is Jack Kimball up at Mid Mountain Dam. Mm, hello, Jack. You want to talk with Bill? Uh, yes, may I please? Uh, yes, hold on. Uh, Bill out and out of the room. Bill, Jack Kimball want to talk to you. Okay, Grey Wolf, I'll be right there. Jack here, Grey Wolf? No, he called from Mid Mountain Dam. Uh oh. Hello, Jack. What's up? Plenty, Bill. Can you come up to the dam right away? Why, sure. We'll be there as quickly as possible. What can we do for you? I'd like you to visit the ice fields on up in the mountains. No, we'll plan on it as we make the trip. Okay, Bill. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye, Jack. Maybe Chinook give us a big headache. It looks that way, Grey Wolf. Let's get Stumpy and Henry and take off. That's the whole story. In two more days, we'll have to open the floodgates wider to keep this top water moving. It's like a small river now. If you jumped into the water, you'd go shoulder deep before you struck ice underneath. Yeah, I believe that. Do you hear that, Bill? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's moving ice, all right, or my name isn't Henry Scott. Yep. That ain't no refrigerator ice cube, neither. Bill, what do you think can be done about this? I don't know. The best suggestion I have is... Fellas and I go up there and take a look. Hey, Bill! We better stop and take some of our outer clothes off. I feel like I'm in a bathtub swimming for dear life. Yeah, yeah me too, Bill. Boy, I'm sweating to beat the band. That's a good idea, fellas. Let's call a halt and take off our parkas. Uh, be careful not take too much clothing off when sweating so much. You catch death of cold. Uh, Gray Wolf's right. Only our parkas. Leave our heavy sweaters on. Uh, here, okay, Get we'll do that. The here, hold the pack to the right, Henry, while I adjust this strap. Yeah, okay. There we are. How's this? Yeah, that's okay. fine. Uh, your pack comfortable? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Stumpy, Gray Wolf, you ready to push on? Yep, old pack mule Jenkins is all hitched up and ready to go. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to, Bill. All right, let's go, fellas. Hey, that's a little reminder of what we come for. This warm wind sure is making the snow skedaddle along the trail. Yeah, boy, I'll say it is, Thumpy. Well, there isn't hardly enough left to make a good snowball. Oh, uh, mountain sure get in way when fellow in hurry. <laughs> you said a mouthful that time, Grey Wolf. Especially since we're walking a constant upgrade. Well, we're making some headway, though. Well, the moving ice sounds closer than it did. Well, it'll probably sound suddenly closer as soon as we get to the top of this ridge. Bill where you think ice is moving. Well, I'd say it's moving in Deep Valley. Why? If that's where the ice is, we've got a long way to go. Why, that's above Bottleneck Canyon. Only 12 more mountains to go, the way I figure it. 12? Oh, there's only six more, Stumpy. Where do you get 12? 
These here rock piles have two sides to them, young feller. Six mountains going up and six mountains coming down makes twelve. <laughs> you figure out. <laughs> Here's Bottleneck Canyon. A little better than halfway to Deep Valley. Right. If we keep the same pace we're going now, we'll make it in good time. Why didn't we take a helicopter up here, Bill? Oh, it's too dangerous, pal. The updrafts and downdrafts in these mountains are awfully dangerous. You probably wouldn't see anything anyhow, because the shadows are too deep. <laughs> Dropped off the end of Deep Valley. My name ain't Stumpy Jenkins. Uh, it sounds like whole mountain come down. There's Deep Valley right ahead, fellas. Yeah, and all you can see is a big black hole. Now well, that's the place. Let's go take a look at the rock crusher at work. There's the ice, fellas. Take a good look. Wow. Now, these pieces are as big as a skyscraper. Yes, Henry, there are pieces of ice in Deep Valley as big as a skyscraper. The huge ice blocks weighing hundreds and possibly thousands of tons surpass any man-made crushers. Relentlessly, the giant cakes of ice grind on, slowly, yes, very slowly, but they never stop. The ice gouges out the sides of the valley like it was putty. Jack and Cole are right. If these ice blocks get loose on the reservoir, they'll make a clean sweep all the way to Dead Man's Gorge, and that includes the part of knotty pine that stretches along the river. Oh, look at that boulder! What's being crushed like nothing? You're seeing real power, Henry. Power in creation. I'm afraid that only the Lord can stop those ice giants. If the Chinook would quit, and a sudden cold blast come along, that would stop it, wouldn't it, Bill? Yes, it would, pal. But it looks hopeless. Oh, you speak truth. No man can stop ice in Deep Valley. Yep, I agree. Wow, did you see that, fellas? That ice cut under the valley wall, and the whole side came down on the ice. And it isn't even slowing down. Yeah, you just see it what most people don't see in their whole lives, honey. When the Lord wants to show men how small and weak they are, all he has to do is send a Chinook along to get some of that there glacier over there on the move. Boy, you aren't just making noise, Stumpy. Why, just think of the power down there in the valley. I never realized, or I should say, I've never had a first-class demonstration of the Lord's power like this. Pal, this is an infinitesimal amount of the Lord's power. Well, let's clock the speed of this ice, and then we'll head back to Mid-Mountain Dam and give Jack and Cole the sad news. Bill, do you mean to tell me that all we can do is wait for the ice to come down and watch it wipe out Mid-Mountain Dam... And then grind on to Nutty Pine Dam and all the way down? I'm sorry, Jack, but you've got the answer. What can we do? We can't just stand here and watch it happen. Jack's right, Bill. Something's got to be done. I agree. But I haven't the slightest idea as to how we can stop ice blocks that crumble ten-ton boulders. He's got a point there, fellas. Only the Lord can stop that ice from coming down. What we need is some sudden cold. We just got the forecast off the ticker tape. There's a cold front moving in. I won't be here for at least 72 hours. We're as helpless as babes in a cradle. Hey, Bill, where are you going? I'm going outside and pray. You've asked everybody but the Lord what we should do. Heavenly Father, 
I don't need to tell thee the problem at hand because thou hast known all about it before we did. Lord, I can't honestly see that it's thy will that the ice blocks be allowed to do the terrible damage that they can do if they get loose. It's not thy will that this happen, and please show us how to stop it. If it is thy will, then thy will be done, because thou dost have an unquestionable reason if this is to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. of a hand at praying, but why does it take Bill so long? We haven't got time to waste. Uh, time in prayer is not wasted time. Uh, I didn't mean it that way, Grey Wolf. But God knows we need help, and we need it quickly. Yeah, you're like a lot of people, Sonny. You pray and ask the Lord for help, and if the answer doesn't come just like you want it, then you get all head up. The Lord will answer our prayers at his own pleasure, and in all probability, it's not in the way you expect. Bill? I haven't any ideas yet, fellas. Guess we might as well spread the alarm so folks can get out while they're getting as good. Uh, may I say something? You certainly can, pal. What's on your mind? Well, I remember reading one time about the action of ice and glaciers against rock. And the book said that there are some types of rock formations that ice or glaciers can't break or move. Mm hmm, that's right. What's that got to do with the problem at hand? Oh, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. But it seems to me that maybe Bottleneck Canyon might be made of that type of rock, where it would have been widened out hundreds of years ago. Hey, that's it. The Lord's answer. What, what, what answer, Bill? Why didn't I think of that before? Think of what? Bottleneck Canyon's made of granite. Solid granite. Well, tell Bill, how you going to do this? Fine, Bill. Bill. Hey, hold it down, fellas. I'll give you my whole plan, and then we'll swing into action. Ah, uh, you talk. We listen. We'll make our stand at Bottleneck Canyon. Now, the ice blocks as they are won't be able to make it through the canyon. They could and will break into smaller blocks and be just as dangerous. Won't they jam up in the canyon? It's pretty narrow, you know. No, Cole, they won't. Perhaps the last one might, but you've got to remember the terrific pressure behind the front ice. Especially since another big slab broke off the glacier while we were on our way up there. Maybe more break off before Chinook through giving us heat treatment. Well, that's very possible, Grey Wolf. Now, in order to stop the ice slabs from getting through the canyon as they break up, I want to make a log jam in the canyon itself. Mm, that that's sounds good, idea. Bill. Maybe it'll work. Yes, the logs should do the trick, all right. A good jam takes days of dynamiting to break up. Right. If the right kind of hardwood logs can be put in there, the jam will hold for a couple of years. Where are you going to get enough logs to do the job? I know where I can get them. Henry, get Frenchy to sell on the phone while I make a rough map of our plan. Right. Boy, if Frenchy can't get logs, then nobody can. Now you've heard the problem and my plan to stop it, Frenchy. What do you think about it? I think the ice, she have one tough job to get by Bottleneck Canyon. Your plan, she sound good. Can you get enough of the right kind of logs up to the top of Bottleneck Canyon quickly enough? Remember, the government will cover the cost. Oh, oh. Frenchy can give you enough logs to fill up the Pacific Ocean if you need them. We have enough cut now for a dozen log rafts. Oh, you let Frenchy take care of getting the logs. Okay, Frenchy. Uh... Fortunately, you'll be able to haul the logs right up to the rim of the canyon without too much trouble. The grade's steep, but it's not impossible or dangerous. Have you enough equipment to do the job, Frenchy? Frenchy, get all the equipment in it. Frenchy ask Ben Larson, Matt Fitzsimmons, and the other boys to get their cuts and snaking gear going as you hang on. Oh, wonderful. I'll see you at the canyon. Let me know if you run into any problems. We need logs, Frenchy, all the logs we can get, and as quickly as we can get them. Oh, oh. Frenchy, bring you logs like they are toothpicks in a box. It's amazing what one phone call can do if it's to the right man. All of Frenchy DuSalle's six foot five inches jumps into action as he generals his lumberjacks. Frenchy has a job to do, and he's going to do it if it's the last thing the big Frenchman ever does. Not only is it his personal pride in doing a good job, but his friend Bill needs help. 
Frenchy bellers in his booming voice, and soon all of the latest logging equipment is in action. Giant diesel cats and wheeled log rollers maneuver around to pick up their loads or carry off what they've already loaded on. Frenchy weaves in and out as he shouts to his men. Hey, Bruno, how many loads you got in tow? I got five, boss. Next trip, take eight. You have your shame. You got the power to do it. Okay, we'll do. Hey, Oli, how many are you going to pick up? Yeah, this year will take uh, 12 big logs. Well, you can take 15 big logs. Yeah, but, boss, they'll tip the cat over backwards. Hey, Tony. Yeah, what do you want, Frenchy? You know how to fix this new rig so Oli can snake 15 logs on skid? Sure. Get some gear and see that it's done quick. And I mean right now. time we got before ice get here. I clocked the ice moving at half a mile an hour, Grey Wolf. That was when we were up here the first time. Let's assume the speed is the same and the ice has moved half the distance to Bottleneck Canyon. Uh, and that give us about ten miles left. Then we got twenty hours to get the jam built. Let's make it eighteen hours for safety. We've got to be finished by sunrise tomorrow. Hey, Bill, the first cats are coming up the grade. Boy, are they pulling the logs. Let's get to the edge of the canyon and get the boys started dumping logs. Where's Frenchie, Bruno? He's coming. He left Ben Larson and Matt Fitzsimmons in charge of loading. Boy, it's a long way down to the bottom. It sure is. How do you plan to drop your logs? I'm going to hook the logs and pull the chains. Then I'll push them over the side. Good. Pass the word that I don't want any accidents. Keep the cats away from the edge. Right. None of the cat drivers want to go over the side either. This is good granite hard pan. It'll hold all the weight we can give it with ease. Okay. Let's help the cat drivers unhitch their logs, fellas. Okay, Bill. We'll get right with you. Watch the tension on the chains and cables. If they snap loose, you can be seriously injured. Ease those turnbuckles off before you unlock the tension levers. Okay, Bruno, push them over. Some of those logs went into the ice straight up. That's what we want, Sonny. They'll lock good that way when the others go down. Yeah, I'll say they will. Yeah, but I didn't think they'd drive themselves through the ice and into the riverbed. Yeah, some of those logs are 50 to 70 feet long, young fella. And they're three to five feet across. They weigh plenty. Uh, so does ice, old timer. Frenchy arrives at the rim of the canyon. He directs the cat drivers with great skill so a maximum number of logs are kept flowing to the canyon edge and dumped. Then work goes on without a hitch. The steep grade looks like a steady stream of ants are hauling their supplies up its side. Bill looks at the sky and sends word for a generator to be hauled up. The generator arrives just at dark, and soon there is enough light for the men to work safely. On into the night they work till Frenchy stops for a few minutes at Bill's direction. Have some coffee while we compare notes, Frenchy. Oh, thanks, Bill. Frenchy need coffee. Oh, man, you're awfully tired. I'll take over directing operations for a while. It's only two hours until sunrise. No, Bill. Frenchy finish what he stole. <sighs> this short rest give me a second wind. Boy, Frenchy work a big sweat from warm winds. Okay, but don't overdo it. According to my figures, your men have dumped 3,000 logs into the canyon. <sighs> More of coffee, please. <sighs> oh, these hit this spot. Frenchy, you think you're right, Bill? I've looked into the canyon with a floodlight from time to time. The jam looks good. 
Some of the logs are broken from the fall. Well, that is good, Bill. Sometimes they short log log jump better than long ones. We take good look as soon as daylight comes. We might not have time. Stumpy and Grey Wolf have been keeping an eye on the ice. It's picking up speed. The French, you think we got enough logs to hold ice now. But we dump more logs for another hour. Okay. We'll stop building the log jam in an hour. Cole and I appreciate your sending for us, Bill. We'd sure like to watch the ice test its strength against the log jam. I thought you would, Jack. Well, the sun will be up in a few minutes. From the racket in the valley, it sounds like the ice is about ready to enter the canyon. Let's join the others. Yeah. Boy, this ought to be a first-class show of strength. Bill and his men and many of the lumberjacks watch the massive blocks of ice move into the mouth of Bottleneck Canyon. The first cake is about a half a block square. It grinds its way to the walls of the canyon and momentarily stops as the granite refuses to be moved or cut. There are three other blocks of ice behind the first, and they're larger and thicker. Suddenly, the first block snaps in two with a sound like thunder. This is it, fellas! Yes, Henry, this is the crucial moment. One of the broken blocks slides past the other and heads for the log jab. Soon the other follows. The ice meets the first logs and snaps them like matchsticks. The ice block is grinding its way into the log jam. Logs crumble like paper straws. The second block is bringing pressure on the first. Now other blocks have split and are moving in behind the first two. The ice is massing its tremendous strength for the test. Henry is almost beside himself with fear. It's not going to hold. The first block's going deeper into the jam. It got to hold. Frenchie Bill log jam. It got to hold. Hey, fellas, listen. Hey, there isn't any noise. The ice has stopped moving. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the latest weather forecast. Fair and warm tonight and tomorrow, but tomorrow evening our fine warm weather will end. The Weather Bureau has put out cold wave warnings for this part of the country cold front will hit us about midnight tomorrow. I'm sure we're all sorry that this touch of spring didn't last longer. In a moment, I'll bring you the sports news. (laughs) That fella needs to be talked to. His roof leaks a little. This Chinook just cost us 3,000 logs and left a lot of dog-tired men. Yeah, old-timer, I hope that the next time a Chinook decides to defrost us... We're well into the middle of summer. Whoever thought a warm wind could give us such a cold-blooded barrel of trouble? It's an old saying, boys and girls, that it's an ill wind that blows no good. As far as Bill and his rangers are concerned, it's a Chinook that blows no good when it comes in the middle of winter. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... 